Welcome. We're glad you're here and tuned into the Finley Community Spotlight Series. Finley Automotive Group is excited to spotlight the Las Vegas Natural History Museum. We hope you're inspired by this short video and we invite you to connect with them and many other community organizations at finleyspotlight.com. My name is Chris Palladino and I am the Communication Development Officer for the Las Vegas Natural History Museum. I'm also the festival director for the Las Vegas Science Technology Festival. Coming up on 27 years ago, our founder, Marilyn Gillespie, she had an idea to open up a, a natural history museum. She created this nonprofit to hit an area of education that our community really lacks, and that's natural science. We have nine different galleries that range everything from live animals into paleontology. And we have 90 different uh, varieties of live animals here. Um, snakes, lizards, spiders, uh, large and small, a lot of different types of fish. Uh, we have the hedgehog, which is our, our, newest, uh, our newest addition downstairs, which is kind of cool as well. On Saturdays and Sundays, we have a program called Critter Connections. And that's when we'll bring out those snakes and the hedgehog and lizards and spiders. And seeing the reaction, you know, is just, is just kind of fun to, you know, when they think that a snake is slimy and they get to feel it and feel that it's not slimy. But the other really cool part is some of our animals that, you know, some of these children have never seen outside of a book or television. So we've had kids, 12, 13 year old kids, will walk in and see our giraffe and say, I didn't realize a giraffe was that big. We have American bison right here, and a lot of people don't realize, even adults don't realize how big they are until they actually see them. We try to make it interactive and hit every type of learning modality. Um, we want to be as hands-on as possible. We want to let people see things, touch things, and mostly experience different aspects of natural science. So my name is Jack Jewell, and I'm consulting animal collection curator for the museum. Uh, my primary duties are caring and overseeing the care of all of the living animals collection at the museum. We have essentially three types of animals here. We have aquatic organisms, both fresh and marine. We have reptiles, and we also have an insect and arachnid, that, that group, the bugs, let's call them the bugs, right? It really helps us connect people to living animals. And when you do that, it creates a mindset, especially those people who may not have that opportunity of learning and also, most importantly, of conserving them and being part of that process. We have a 3,000 gallon artificial seawater marine system here, and we have sharks and rays actually from all over the world, interestingly enough, though our dominant population at the moment is from California. We have California round rays. California round rays are really interesting animals as they happen to be the stingray that's responsible for more stings than any stingray in the entire planet four times as many as any other stingray. We also have a California horn shark, another great interesting animal. Anybody who dives may have seen one because they're very common. They're called horn sharks because they have two spines right in front of their dorsal fins that look like horns. And they're a relatively cryptic species in the wild and even here, spend a lot of time hiding inside caves and rocks, but then they come out and they're beautiful and attractive animals. Horn sharks are found all over the world. This particular one is a California horn shark. Then we have a group of bamboo sharks. We have white spotted bamboo sharks here, some really interesting things with them. All of these were born in, in our care. So either here at the museum or in other aquarium facilities that have been donated to us. When we do the feed, one of the things that we do is we're constantly interpreting it to our visitors, right? And what that enables us to do is talk to them about these realities to give them a vision about these animals that's different than maybe the preconceptions or misconceptions they may have. In formal science education, my, my shirt says that science is awesome, right? In formal science education is so much more important than I think most people realize. I spent my whole life studying, thinking about this, doing this, and I have to tell you the bulk of my education came from informal science. I'm Dr. Josh Bondi, I'm on the board of directors here and I'm the head of research and conservation for the museum. So in this room, this is our Richard Ditton Learning Lab. And so for all of the paleontological projects across the state and for archeological projects in Southern Nevada, those projects come back here and we work on them in front of the public. So we have an open format. So uh, visitors and guests of the museum can come ask questions. They can even handle some of the less sensitive bones and artifacts and actually get to experience science. So we have a couple of projects that we're doing across the state, mostly on the paleontological end right now. So we have digs out at the new Ice Age Fossil State Park. And so we have some mammoth tusks we're working on, some camel bones, some horse bones and bison bones. 
Uh, we also are working on the only known dire wolf bone from the entire state of Nevada in this lab. It's currently on display over at the Old Mormon Fort, but you know, it's housed technically here. Uh, we're working on dinosaurs from northern and southern Nevada. So we have dinosaurs that are about 100 million years old from down here that we've just dug in this past weekend. And then uh, dinosaurs from central Nevada that we go out and find every summer. We go out there and dig for a couple weeks and bring things back. So we're building on Nevada's dinosaur history too. From southern Nevada, we have ancestors of tyrannosaurs, duck-billed dinosaurs, iguanodons, armored dinosaurs like uh, Ankylosaurus, sauropod dinosaurs, ones with the great big long tails and long necks and a whole slew of crocodiles and turtles and fish and even dinosaur eggshell. Uh, from, from central Nevada, we are getting raptors, armored dinosaurs also, sauropod dinosaurs, and iguanodons. We excavated a partial skull of a four-tusked elephant-like animal from Esmeralda County, uh, rhinos, horses, camels that fill the same ecological niche as giraffes. Uh, we find those across almost every single county in the state. So this is a uh, mammoth tusk, which was found at Ice Age Fossil State Park. Uh, me and a couple of undergraduate volunteers went out and dug this thing up about three years ago. So based on the diameter it's a, of the tusk, if we look to the right, that's where the uh, tusk would have been in the socket of the animal because it's still hollow. Um, so I sent the diameter of that tusk off to a couple of mammoth experts. They said if it was a male, it was probably a teenager when it met its demise. If it was a female, it was probably in its 20s. Under the microscope here, we have an attached camera. And so, in addition to the really big stuff, we also study the really small things. So upstairs, we have a screen washing setup. So we take sediment from our various projects and we dump it into these nested screens and just let them float in a tub. And uh, as the water breaks down the sand and the silt and the clay, all that passes through the, the screens. And so students pick through what's left over and we find little teeny tiny fossils like that. So that's part of a fish jaw, an Ice Age fish jaw from also from Ice Age Fossil State Park. As much as I love digging up dinosaurs and mammoths and things like that, it's the little things that tell us more about environmental change and climate change and things like that because they're more sensitive to it. So with some recent funding, we were able to procure a scanner, a 3D scanner and a hand scanner and a 3D printer. And so now we have the capability of 3D digitizing all of our artifacts and our fossils. And so we can, that helps us to conserve them not only physically, but digitally, because if the actual specimen breaks, we can print off a replica of it. But it also gives us a mechanism. We can make educational tools out of those. We can email them to teachers and teachers can make, build lesson plans around them. and. Uh, Say a researcher in Germany or Russia wants to study a Nevada dinosaur, we can email it to them. <laughs> well, just in general is that Nevada is largely an untapped resource when it comes to fossil resources. And so through a lot of hard work, through the work of a lot of volunteers and the generosity of the museum and supporters of the museum, we wouldn't be able to have this open lab in order to share the history of Nevada with the citizens and with guests as well. So any fossil that's not coming to this lab right now, we're losing out of state. So people should come down and see their fossils. <laughs> uh, we have two major fundraising initiatives throughout the year. One is our Dinosaur Ball, which is our Black Tie Gala, which happens in November. Um, then we have our Sundown and Downtown events, um, which will happen, happens during the springtime, which is uh, focused on bringing people down to the museum that, hadn't, that haven't been here. Um, we run, we're a 501c3, we run strictly on donations and uh, the, the money that we get on admission. So coming down here is the best way that you can support the museum. It's very family friendly and it's, and it's affordable. Uh, one of our best values is our family membership, which is $65 for the year, which gets your family full access to the museum as many times as you want throughout the year. So just that little bit of money, and it goes a long way for us, and goes a long way keeping our exhibits up and running and our animals fed and taken care of as well. And I encourage everyone to bring your kids, their grandkids, and kids, bring your parents. Because a lot of people don't know what an incredible place this is. There are experiences to be had, knowledge to be gained, and family building to be had at all times.